artificially inseminate a woman who wanted to have a baby with her partner while she was in a same-sex relationship. The doctor said, that violates my religious beliefs and I refuse to do that. Uh, this individual sued. It went all the way to the California Supreme Court. And the court's statements on this um, were very clear. It doesn't violate free speech or free exercise of religion to require compliance with the non-discrimination laws. Again, who wins? The non-discrimination is a higher value in our society now than religious liberties and free speech. Very clear who the winner and loser there is. The court explained that the burden on the doctor's religious beliefs is insufficient to allow him to engage in discrimination based on sexual orientation. We already heard about Catholic charities uh, in Boston, in Massachusetts. Hundred years of placing children in homes in, in for adoption in Massachusetts. And when the law was changed to allow for same-sex marriage by the courts, uh, and I, when I, I may backtrack, the law wasn't changed. The courts by judicial fiat redefined marriage, which was not done properly in the legislative department branch. But nonetheless, the Catholic Charities was faced with a choice. We now either have to follow our beliefs and refuse to place children in, a, in these homes, or we have to give up our beliefs and place the children in the homes. That was the two choices the government gave them. Catholic char char charities uh, chose to close their doors with regard to adoptions and no longer place children in homes because they could not place them in homes that intentionally deprived them of a mom and a dad. But the choice was simple, close your doors or comply. And they closed their doors. The Christian photographer in New Mexico, we've heard about this one today, the $6,600 fine because the photographer refused to photograph a same-sex commitment ceremony. Um, I think this one really highlights the goal of domination. Um, I don't know if there's any photographers in the room, but photographers, you can find one. Uh, it's not as though it's the, you know, the one photographer in the entire state that could photograph my wedding. Uh, there are others, but the domination goal is very clear here because instead of going and finding a photographer who shared your values on your special day, instead they take him to the Human Rights Commission and want compliance with the laws and ultimately the photographer was fined for refusing a $6,600 fine. The Vermont Inn, and this is the one that Kai Feldblum was actually talking about when she mentions her no compromise with regard to religious beliefs. It was a Vermont Inn that was a bed and breakfast. It was ran by a Catholic family. They homeschooled their children. All of their children participated in some way at the Vermont Inn. The little ones helped clean up and pick up. The older ones waited on tables. Uh, when a same-sex couple came to that inn and wanted to have their civil commitment ceremony, civil union ceremony, um, performed there, not the ceremony, but the party actually, the reception, they refused based on their religious beliefs. Uh, the couple took them to the Human Rights Commission. And before that Human Rights Commission, we had to defend that the, their religious beliefs were sincere and that the belief that marriage is between one man and one woman was a core tenet of their belief. That's the only reason we won on a vote by one vote on that case. It was a 4-3 decision, and it was because we were able to convince them that this was a core tenet of their belief, not just that they sincerely held this belief. Otherwise, they could have had their doors shut. YMCA, and, and we often say that, but remember what that stands for, Young Men Christians Association, was brought before the Human Rights Campaign, uh, Human Rights Commission in California uh, for revoking the, actually, it wasn't California, it was Iowa, for revoking the family membership um, of a lesbian couple. Once they realized it wasn't an opposite sex couple, they said you can't have the married fee. Uh, they eventually uh, settled with them and were willing to allow them to have the family membership fee, but then six years after the fact, when a grant is now coming up for renewal last year, one of the city council members said, unless you apply this across the board, not just to that one couple you settled with, we're going to pull your grant of $102,000 because you discriminate based on sexual orientation as the YMCA. Again, very clear there's a winner and there's a loser. You either give in or you get out of business. Schools. We haven't heard a lot about those today other than with regard to, obviously, Kevin Jennings and the efforts of GLSEN in the schools, which are widespread. Um, and I invite you to go on GLSEN's website. Um, you have to hunt a little bit more than you used to, but you can find teacher resources and the curriculum they propose in schools. The most recent activity of GLSEN in the public schools, and this one's not up there, last year they started something called Trans Action Day. 
uh, for any commercial attorneys in the room. It has nothing to do with drafting commercial documents. Uh, it actually has to do with transgendered rights. And as part of that, they have curriculum. And what, they're all, what they have is actually a little dictionary, one-page list of terms of how we need to change the terminology in schools because they're discriminatory. No longer can you use he and she. Z, Z-I-E, is now to be used as the personal pronoun to represent he and she, and her, H-I-R, is to be used as the possessive form of her and him. Uh, this is new gender neutral, it's non-discriminatory, and it also then furthers the agenda of transgendered because it doesn't matter if you think you're a male or a female one day or it changes back and forth, we now have a pronoun that covers them all. And this is part of the agenda. Uh, their new campaign started last year. Some other examples, Lutheran High School sued for expelling two girls who engaged in homosexual conduct. Now keep in mind this school has a policy of no sexual conduct outside the marital relationship. They're obviously teenagers so they're not married, uh, but because this was a homosexual relationship it's an easy target to bring out charges against them that it's is based on sexual orientation, uh, which is what they did. And so they were sued um, by these individuals based on sexual orientation as a Lutheran high school. Uh, Maine Human Rights Commission found that the school discriminated against a transgendered fifth grader by denying him access to the girls' restroom. And again, this is an example when you know the underlying facts of how clear the goal of domination is. Because the facts here indicate the school actually let this boy in fifth grade who wants to come to school dressed as a girl, they let him come to school dressed as a girl, they called him as a girl, they actually let him use the girls' restrooms at first. But when other children, particularly other boys, started harassing him, they would then punish the other boys for harassing him. But out of fear for this boy's safety, they said, you know what, we have a single stall faculty bathroom down the hall, we think it's safer you use that bathroom. And so they let this student use the faculty bathroom. That was not good enough for these parents. They sued, took him to the Human Rights Commission, and the Human Rights Commission found that this was a violation based on transgender discrimination, and the school is now forced to let him use the girls' restroom and to protect him. College Christians, we already heard about the Christian organizations and their policies. I won't revisit that again. PFOX Flyer in Maryland. Uh, if you go on the web uh, internet right now and Google this, you can get a lot of information about it. But PFOX distributes materials in public schools saying change is possible. Okay? They just want you to know the facts about the fact that change is possible. Uh, and now you've got groups in Maryland, PFLAG in particular, that are saying that's hate speech. Because you're sending the message that you're not born this way. You're sending the message that there's something wrong with being this way. Uh, and so now PFOX's simple message that change is possible and the true message is now being labeled as hate speech in Maryland. And mandatory diversity training is taking place in our public schools, uh, both for teachers and students. And um, they're encouraging kids at a very young age to explore their sexual identity and explore sexuality. Uh, anybody who stands up against that is labeled as needing, obviously, more diversity training because they don't understand uh, that this is what's good for them. We heard about this earlier, and I want to touch on this as my last sort of parental, ri parental rights in schools before I move on to the families. Uh, this is the King and King that was mentioned. This is that Parker case during Lit Professor Wardle's discussion that came up. Um, and this is a situation where first graders were read the King and King in schools in Massachusetts. Parents did not know about it. Massachusetts does have that opt-out provision. Uh, and so after they learned about it, parents said, well, you know, in the future, we'd like the right to opt out. If you're going to be doing this, we'd like to opt our children out. The school said, you don't have that right to opt out. For It's not sex education curriculum. It's just us teaching in other classes like literature and reading and social studies about what is a family now that same-sex marriages are legal. And so this is a story of the king and king. It's like Cinderella, where the queen wanted to have a ball so that her, king, her son, who would be king one day, would meet a nice young lady. All of the ladies were paraded before him, and he didn't like any of them. And you see here he ultimately chose another man. Uh, and so it's really, you know, the prince and his future king and king. Uh, and ultimately the book ends. There, there they are holding the hand that says here the queen even shed a tear on the day of the wedding. Uh, and then, then the, and it ends with them kissing. And this was read to first graders. Uh, so the, the Parkers and others took them to court saying all we want is the right to opt out, our parental rights. This is what the court had to say about that clash that we talked about earlier. Reading this book is consistent with Massachusetts regulation that all public school systems shall, through their curricula, encourage respect for the human and civil rights of all individuals regardless of race, race color, sex, religion, national origin, and sexual orientation. So what about parental rights? Here's what the court had to say. You have parental rights. You can choose to send them to private school. You can choose to homeschool them. Um, 
or you can actually elect new people on the school board and change our policies. But once you put your kids in our schools, your rights stop at our schoolhouse doors.